Friday, the 4th of October. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Frontier Opening Bell. I am Bussin Amafaye here on the show. Uh, let's uh, just uh, take a quick look at the Thursday's trading uh, day. The uh, Egyptian stock market came back roaring 1.24% on Thursday to close the market week in Cairo, uh, strongly above the 31,000 level after that um, uh, profit taking we saw Wednesday, the market uh, came back much stronger uh, Thursday and just to say goodbye to his first week in the new month of October. That it was. In Nigeria, the market fell very sharply, 1.2%. Dangote shares fell strongly yesterday as well as FBN Holdings, the parent company of Nigeria's oldest commercial bank, First Bank of Nigeria Limited. That was in play. Then you've got a couple of other decliners as well, but it remained very strong transactions. The shares of Seplat Energy listed on both Lagos and London stock exchanges were in in strongly 10% maximum for Thursday on the news from Mr. President, Independence Day speech that the Seplat Exit Mobile multi billion dollar asset deal will be signed on over the next couple of weeks. That took the market into positive sentiments on Seplat Energy shares. Let's move on to the BRVM. That was half a percent back in positive territory for the composite in quarter. The Ghana stock market was down a quarter of a percent after Ghana did a very major positive euro bond exchange program announced yesterday, saving the country about 5 billion US dollars off its national debt portfolio. Great news there for Dr. Mohamed uh, Adam, who is the finance minister and the outgoing president, Nana Akufo Ado. The uh, Nairobi stock market remained in the green 0.43% on the all share index, while the GSE fell by about three quarter of a percent, just a few notches below the 87,000 we saw it on Tuesday. So keep that in mind. Let's move on and check what's making the headlines across the continent as we move on. Just East Africa, by the way, Ethiopia's central bank yesterday says it sold 175 million US dollars into the FX market to help the uh, newly licensed non-bank FX bureau and others get on with the new floating exchange rate management system that Ethiopia now has in place. In the meantime, the Arab East Africa is looking to be a major beneficiary of India's lifting the ban on rice exports. And Tanzania Central Bank yesterday decided to hold key lending rate at 6%, while the EFDB is making $10 million equity investment in Damana Guarantee of Kenya to support uh, funding facilities within the East Africa's biggest economy. And nearly $900 million is coming into Tanzania from the Indian uh, conglomerate Adani Group to support power lines construction and raising up the electricity uh, in markets in, in Tanzania. But you got a, a bit of a pushback, if you remember, in Kenya, just next door with the Adani's 25 year concession with the Jumbo Kenyatta International Airport. The same Adani group is now doing a $900 million deal next door in uh, Tanzania. But let's see how uh, this go this time around in Tanzania. Let's leave it there. West Africa. Of course, Nigeria yesterday floated two new uh, tax um, reforms from the Ministry of Finance, which is expected to first help Nigerians uh, gain some level of a consumption uh, capabilities back. That's the government taking down VAT on consumption of a CNG, of a, a liquefied petroleum gas, cooking gas, whatever it is, and all of that. That's one one high. Then you've got another bill, which is... Uh, expected to help provide some incentives into investments in the deep water oil and gas industry. That is expected to bring in about $10 billion into Nigeria. It's been widely praised. We need to see more details of that and how it will help Nigeria become that frontier for investments on the African continent. In the meantime, the whole Middle East war and crisis raising the uh, oil prices yesterday, at least at the bedtime Nigerian time, Brent crude was trading strongly at above $77 a barrel, great to uh, ship oil as well as the shares of tanker companies or shipping companies are jumping because uh, everyone is sitting tentatively to see whether Israel will target Iranian oil facilities in its retaliation to the barrage of missiles fired from Tehran into Israel a few days ago. Uh, Statement, uh, uh, comment by President Biden, US President Biden says that it's being discussed with Israel. There's no clarity on that yet. Everyone is keeping fingers crossed. In the meantime, dollar index is moving up 101. 
uh, 56 on, on the news, U.S. Treasury 10-year paper also climbing. In the meantime, uh, Naira is in a very tight corner as we speak, touched 1,700 briefly on Wednesday, and Thursday came down just a little brief uh, uh, below that level as liquidity crunch continues in terms of FX for Africa's most populous economy. And get to Ghana. That's where the breaking news came. Just today, the finance minister, Dr. Mohammed uh, Adam, provided a robust briefing on how Ghana was able to secure 98% approval from international bondholders to rejig the country's debt portfolio. The euro bond package now they got 96% of that entire portfolio restructured, which gives Ghana a haircut of $5 billion, roughly that in terms of uh, the total size and will also help the country uh, to pay a bit little of interest, much lower, a bit lower from what is usually get paid on those uh, euro bonds. It was a big story yesterday and everyone was swarming over that. Zambia took about three years to get through to such a deal. Sri Lanka is still walking its way through that. Zimbabwe hasn't made much headway as well, but Ghana said did it in just nine months. And more than 96% of the debts have now been rejected, as I said. So Ghana now has uh, something indicative as it goes into a major presidential election in December. President Akufuado will be beating his chest as he leaves office in the next three months. Let's get to Southern Africa and just uh, check in a few um, headlines as we move into uh, the uh, the weekend. The Southern African, South Africa's uh, energy sector is still uh, not yet out of the woods. So the uh, uh, authorities in Pretoria are trying to find a way to mitigate the negative impact of what could expected impact on consumers, the plan by ESCOM to raise electricity rates. So that's a major issue there, why fuel prices taper a little bit. ESCOM is asking for much strongly higher tariffs on electricity. The Maposa's administration is trying to find way measures to mitigate uh, that. Things are not looking really pretty in Zimbabwe as far as the uh, currency disease is concerned. So President Emerson Nagagwa says all measures will be toughly implemented to stop the slide of the ZIG. And Angola is looking to grant 15 new oil concessions by the end of this year. It's going to be a roller coaster into 2025 by Angola, which is currently holding an oil and gas major conference put together by Energy Capital and Power in, uh, in, uh, in, in the country. And FSCA, that's South Africa's, um, Financial Services uh, Regulator has uh, barred two investment advisors for 30 years because of their role in the BHI Ponzi scandal. That's the latest on that. The Central Bank in Zambia says about $7.9 billion has been received via export proceeds tracking framework. That new framework allows all export proceeds to be streamlined and come straight into the coffers of the government, and that seems to be paying off. Let's uh, move into North Africa. Just to say, uh, thank God it's a Friday here on uh, Frontier Opening Bell, Egypt is reporting a GDP uh, slowdown to 2.4% for its fiscal 2023-2024, according to the Ministry of National Planning. While Bokra and CIC have launched a $200,000 US dollars aid for Egyptian student entrepreneurs. The whole idea is to support the students who have entrepreneurial skills to get on very quickly on with life and contribute to the economy. And Carousel Mall is opening in Rabat, Morocco, with about $60 million uh, investments. And Egypt cabinet has approved $60 million investment in flax production, as well as uh, potassium sulfates. The plant is being put up in one of the economic zones in the North Africa's economy. Those are your headlines. Welcome to Friday and the start of your weekend. Have a great one, and I'll see you next week.